Paul, thank you very much. And let me begin by saying it's an honor to have the opportunity to address this important and impressive audience. Uh, I've had the opportunity to participate in uh, numerous Terrapin events all around the world. And I must say there are great opportunities and I uh, would like to thank the organizers for assembling such a terrific program today. On August 16th, 2007, less than six years ago, the Economist magazine ran an article that was called Electricity in Africa, the Dark Continent. And the subtitle was Power Shortages Have Become One of the Biggest Breaks on Development. And of course, the article was accompanied by that famous nighttime satellite photo that was in Vincent's presentation, which showed very few glimmers of light on the African continent, but a very bright Europe, particularly Italy, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. This article continues to describe the dire circumstances related to African, the African power sector, inadequate capacity, poor, poorly operating generators, insufficient maintenance, and the economists went on to point the finger and cast blame at poor governance, dictatorships, failed efforts at electrification, lack of foreign investment. Well, I imagine those of you who have spent your career working in the power industry in Africa really don't need a fellow from Washington, D.C. Uh, come down to Johannesburg and tell you what the problems of the past few decades have been. So fast forward from 2007 to April 9th, 2013. The title of my discussion is The Vision of Power Generation in Africa to Underpin Economic Development. So what vision? And if you have a vision, how do you keep that vision from just being a dream, or even worse, becoming a nightmare? The vision for an African electric power system of the future is one of abundance, it's affordable, it's reliable, and it's clean. Aspirations for Africa should be nothing less than reality today in North America and in Europe. You should expect nothing less. For abundance, in North America, we essentially have 100% saturation of electric power. Pretty much anybody who wants to have electric power in the United States and Canada has electric power. And there are very, very, very few citizens who lack access to electricity. It should be affordable. In the United States, we have had flat wholesale, average wholesale prices of, of electricity for 40 years. 40 years of flat, inflation adjusted, but flat, essentially flat, wholesale electricity prices. Reliable. Electricity can be 99.9% 90 .9 reliable. That's to say that through the course of an average year, not counting storms that are unpredictable, um, but, but electricity should be available for all but maybe eight hours a year. In the past 20 years, I'll tell you, I've lost power at my house in, outside of Washington, D.C. for no more than 10 hours in 20 years. And that 10 hours was during an ice storm. So if you remove unusual weather events, you should have practically 100% reliable electricity. In my office, which is in downtown Washington, D.C., in over 20 years, we've never lost power once. Never once. And clean. 
If you look at the time in the United States from 1970 to the year 2000, in that 30-year period of time, three decades, we tripled the use of coal. We used 300% more coal in the year 2000 than what we used in 1970. Yet atmospheric emissions were less than a third in 2000 than what they were in 1970. So we tripled coal use, but shrunk emissions to be 30% of, of what they were. But what does this mean for Africa? It means electricity from diverse resources as appropriate in the context of each sovereign nation. It means deploying renewable energy, wind, hydro, solar, and increasingly geothermal. The African continent is blessed with attractive renewable resources. And you have an absence of entrenched political interests that you see in Europe and you see in North America. Uh, so there's no reason politics would not be interfering with deployment of renewables on the continent. They can work and, and they must work and they will work. But also it means deploying additional fossil fuels, generating additional supplies of power with natural gas and new coal power stations. The way the world is today, the expectation is by the middle part of the century, every fossil fuel generating unit is going to be equipped with carbon capture and storage. That means carbon capture and storage on new coal plants, carbon capture and storage on new gas plants, and in many countries, carbon capture and storage on existing natural gas and coal electric generating stations. So why not now begin planning for the day? It may be a decade, it may be two decades, but plan for the day when CCS will be economic to install on power plants in Africa. And what that means is today, when you're planning, designing, siting, locating a new electric power station, plan for CCS, plan for the space, so that in a decade or two, when we develop, commercialize, and deploy on large scale this new technologies, um, you'll have the capability of going in and retrofitting new plants, as I said, in a decade or two, when the cost will be much, much less than, than it is today. Our previous speaker made it very clear that nuclear will be part of the mix uh, in some countries. And I think that as you see the development of small modular nuclear reactors, these are nuclear reactors that are 125, maybe 150 megawatts. That they're inherently safe. They go very long periods of time without having to be refueled. They're manufactured in a factory and shipped to a plant site as opposed to being built on site. And these new small modular reactors, I think are gonna make the nuclear option an option for many countries that just aren't prepared to, to deploy a 1,000 megawatt or 1,500 megawatt nuclear plants. Um, it will be much more, it will be a very practical option. Capital costs will be much less for the larger plants, and they can be built in modular units uh, to increase the size as electric power needs grow. And for those who may not be aware, the notion of small nuclear reactors is not a dream. Uh, it's not some fantasy. Uh, it's the technology is here and it's now. And we've been using small not modular nuclear reactors in the United States Navy for several decades. Never a, single, never a single accident, never a single injury, never a single death. Our president, President Barack Obama, likes to refer to his approach to energy as an all of the above energy strategy. And that's what Africa needs, is an all of the above energy strategy, both for fuels and for technology. But the supply side 
that I've been talking about is only about half the equation. Maybe it's less than half the equation. It's only part of the story. In addition to a diverse and robust set of supply options, the African power sector can be more efficient, smarter, and greener. The man side management, energy efficiency and conservation, energy efficiency in, in production, energy efficiency in transmission and distribution, and end use energy efficiency are all important. And you can leapfrog other parts of the world, and as you build out your power grid, your transmission and distribution systems, you have the opportunity to make them smart grids from the beginning and not have to go back in and redo them as, as we find ourselves doing. And also greener, reducing atmospheric emissions, which is gonna include CO2. Foreign investment in trade is one tool. Uh, earlier this year, General Electric signed an agreement with the Transnational Corporation of Nigeria to co collaborate in developing power infrastructure. GE is committed to play an important role in adding 10,000 megawatts of new power capacity over the next decade. Siemens has launched its Wind Power Center of Competence in South Africa and is bringing tools to make cities and power grids and the transportation sector smarter. And if you have an opportunity, which you, which you will, to just uh, walk through the exhibition uh, down on the lower levels, you'll see any variety of foreign companies that are prepared to invest in, uh, in Africa. And I was struck by uh, Ross Adam from, from Russia being in the exhibit and by the number of, of Chinese organizations that are, that are here wanting to do business. And you only need to look at the agenda for this conference to marvel at the possibilities. And, and when you look at the electric power sector in Africa and you look at this, this conference agenda, we're, we're talking now about restructured energy markets, we're talking about cross-border trade, regional integration, the case for renewables, the case for coal, the case for nuclear, wind in Kenya, solar in Ethiopia, and shale gas development. Ten years ago, most of these topics would have only been discussed in an academic event in Africa, not in a business conference, not in an event designed to cause business to happen. And this is truly, to quote President Obama again, an all of the above opportunity. Now at the United States Energy Association, we think that we're playing a small role in progressing the, the African power sector. With support from the U.S. Agency for International Development, uh, we've worked in Africa for well over a decade, and we support the, support, we've supported the advancement of interregional trading um, by cooperative programs with the Southern Africa Power Pool, the Western Africa Power Pool, and the Central African Power Pool. With the U.S. Agency for International Development funding, we have brought representatives, delegations from all three of these systems to the United States to observe, to observe how our regional transmission system operators are structured, how they function, and how they're organized. This has included lengthy discussions of regulation, environmental standards, planned outages, maintenance schedules, bilateral contracts, energy efficiency, and cross-border trade. Today, literally as we speak, again with funding from the U.S. Agency for International Development, we are establishing cooperative partnerships in Tanzania and Ghana. We had earlier cooperative partnerships in Ghana with the Volta River Authority and the Public Utility Regulatory Commission. Other USAID-funded partnerships that we've been involved with include Angola, Botswana, Kenya, Nigeria, Mozambique, Libya, and Zambia. Our new partners in Tanzania will be the Tanzania Electric Supply Company and the Zanzibar Electric Corporation, and also the uh, Tanzania Petroleum Development Corporation. 
USEA and USAID is also supporting another initiative, which is called the US East Africa Geothermal Partnership. And this initiative, because the United States is one of the global leaders in geothermal energy technology, and because East Africa is one of the most promising sites in the world for geothermal, um, the uh, USAID Geothermal Energy Partnership will tap into US industry expertise to boost East Africa's long-term economic growth and economic development. And I think I have to say, you probably wouldn't be here if you didn't already very, very well understand the, the requirement for energy to fuel economic development. There hasn't been a region of the world that's progressed economically without having adequate, affordable, and reliable supplies of electricity. Equally important is the demand side of our, our power system strategy. Hence, in two weeks, USAID, with support from the United States Energy Association, will conduct a workshop on demand side management and advanced metering. This will predominantly be focused on the roles of energy efficiency and demand response. Topics include subjects such as utility demand side programs in the United States, regulatory frameworks to advance energy efficiency, marketing and customer engagement, load control, and interruptible load programs, and smart grid with advanced metering applications. And, and our approach to international cooperation, I might add, is very much one of let us show you what the experiences that we've had in the United States. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna tell you what works in your country or your company or your circumstance. We're simply gonna show you how we do things and, and know that you'll be smart enough to figure out whether they have application in your circumstances or not. So to let me close, the vision of power generation in Africa to underpin economic growth is to, as a, President Obama observes, a strategy of all of the above. Diverse fuel and technology approach that yields a power supply that's abundant, affordable, reliable, clean, and that's more efficient, smart, and greener. Thank you very much for your attention.